Bit over on Mark here from Mark and Cars. Today I'm going to go through the step-by-step -step process of installing the Berger Motorsports JV4 tuning box for the GR Yaris. Now the box itself um, contains quite a few items here. We've got the box itself, which is a machined aluminium sealed unit, which you can open up through the Allen key fittings at the back, which shouldn't be required, but if you've got the Bluetooth connector, the JB4 connector kit, you do have to um, unscrew the back and plug it in, remove the grommet that this fills. Now the connections to this JB4 unit are two airflow bypasses or sensors or interrupters, I guess and a cable to go into the OBD2 connector inside the car that plugs it also into the box, which is just here, okay? So by having that OBD2 connector with the JB4 connect kit, the Bluetooth connect kit, Using the app, you can then see all the features and change the maps of the unit on your phone. Okay, so that's all pretty straightforward. Okay, so this is, for your information, a right-hand drive GR Yaris. Now, a lot of the um, processes will be identical, but I'll go through how it's done on this car and how you could compromise it on the other. First thing, take off the, um, the engine cover here. If you haven't done it before, it is literally just some rubber fittings on a on ball fittings so just take that off and put that to the side for now and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in the engine bay area the JV4 kit now I'm going, I'm thinking this little space above the radiator and behind the front grill here is where I'm going to lay it and to give him some ideas, here's one of the sensors that we need to connect the um, manifold, intake manifold and the turbo manifold pressure sensors down here. So I'll just show you that one as well. Now I know I'm going to, I've got the two cables, I've got, oh sorry, the two sets of plugs. So the closest one to the JB4 box will go to the manifold here and the second one down to turbo manifold. Okay, so as I'm gonna mount the JB4 just here, I'm gonna use the two holes that already exist here. That's what the bracket holes here are for. So I'll mount it literally just sitting down here like this. So I'm actually gonna mount the unit up first, then I'll do the cable um, layout and plug it in. Here's the bracket I've made, it's just a 90 degree. I will just show you the dimensions of it here. It has already got the holes pre-drilled and tapped to mount the JB4 box. Okay, so I'm using uh, hex fitted uh, bolts and 10 millimeter nuts, so all metric fittings. Um, so I just need a four millimeter uh, hex wrench and a 10 millimeter spanner for install. So I'll do this here. And I'm going to mount the JB4 onto this. So I'm sort of just going to leave the cables laying about until I know where I'm going to go exactly. I have a slight overlap here with the JB4 box and this hole. So I've, I've nipped this up, but I'm just going to hold this aside while I install the mount itself onto the car. I'm using a spring washer as well. So the bracket is secured onto the car and I'm just gonna finish securing the JV4 onto the bracket. So there's the unit there, it's very solidly mounted now. So now I'm gonna actually plug the cables in. Before I do so, I'm going to disconnect the negative terminal of the battery. Okay, before you plug or unplug any of the cabling under the bonnet, 
um, disconnect the negative terminal of the battery. So just, that's just a 10 millimeter. Okay, that's disconnected. Okay, so I've got the tuning box mounted just here and I have to get the loom across to this sensor here and down to this sensor down here. Let's see if I can get a better shot of that. So I actually want to run the cabling um, so that it's tidy and pretty much invisible. So I'm actually going to route it through this little gap underneath the metalwork here. So it will come out of here. And then I've got to make sure it is not going to be anywhere near the alternator fan or anything, belts or anything like that. Okay, so this part of the cable, I'm going to route under here. It's a bit of, it's quite fiddly. Okay, so that's under there. So it comes in under this coolant line and I'm going to go in between these two looms here so that the cable will be kept clear of the belt. There's no chance of it falling or anything like that. So that's it there. Now some of you might be wondering, it's going to be a bit messy, but when the cover's on you probably won't see a lot. So the first of the two cables here will plug into the top one. So you just squeeze the clip and it unplugs. Plug in the and that will still continue to sit just tuck it in behind the cable and it will hide the plug and the excess cable that we're going to have here we'll deal with once we've routed this part of the um, down to the second sensor. Okay for the second sensor so there's the first one plugged in I'm actually going to which is situated just right here it's a bit hard to see because it's underneath this cable and it's also a black plug. But I'll just show you if I unplug it, it might make it easier to see. It's the same connector as what we had here. So to get that down there, I'm actually going to route it behind this hose. And also behind this hose, this hose just here. Again, same as before, connect the plug. Make sure it is situated so that there is, it's not going to drop into any rotating or moving parts down here, which on this side it's pretty clear. There's plenty of uh, protection there. Now uh, with this excess cable, depending on what you want to do, you can zip tie it in or tuck it in underneath completely up to you what you want to do there. Okay, so that's this part of it plugged in. I've now got the, what I say to be the hardest part is the OBD2. Okay, now that's done. I can put the cover back on, which easiest way to line it up is just line up your oil filler and it just snaps on to the various fittings. Now everything is hardly visible. We'll deal with this in a moment. Okay now the, the OBD2 plug has to come from inside the car through the firewall to get to the JB4 box. Now you can see here there's a heat shield here because the hot part of the turbo and everything is back there as is the exhaust. So the there are some uh, heavy duty heat shielded grommets that pass through the firewall on both sides of the car. However, they are a long way back and short of dropping the um, tray or the engine itself, getting to them is quite problematic. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to come up the window sill and 
through the panel down here. Okay, the OBD2 socket is actually just below the hood pull underneath the dash. So there it is there, the white socket. Okay, the first step is to plug in the OBD2 plug. Make sure it's in properly. And then I will route it into this space here. You see I can poke the cable I can poke the cable into the seal here. Now this part of the seal is actually separate and it pulls out. So I'm going to run it to the top here and underneath it. And then behind this seal here, I can tuck the cable all the way through. So I'll straighten this out a bit. So I'll go in one side of this seal and out the other. Now whilst that doesn't, this doesn't look extremely pretty at the moment, what I am going to do is tuck it all back in the way Toyota intended. And we'll go through the weather shield in, this, in the quarter panel. Up that gap there in the quarter panel, you can, might be able to see there is a black weather shield in there and this cable is going to come through on the side of it. So I can, I can fit my hand in there. So that's it come through there. Okay, so once you have it through here, you'll run it, run it underneath any existing cables or water drains that are through here and in as inconspicuous a place as possible. So I tend to run behind the lights. And and into this base where it can connect to the JB4 connector. So I've got the JB4 Connect Bluetooth Connect kit. They recommend that it faces the cab of the car. So I'm actually just going to zip tie it to the loom where the airflow sensors go to and allow it to sit there so it's uh, quite easy and visible to the car. Got the cutters to trim the zip tie I'm going to use. That's it all installed. Now to reconnect the battery and start the car up to ensure that it works. Now while the cabling's done, we'll reconnect the battery terminal. Nice and tight. Okay, first thing is um, start the car up. It's always a good sign that it starts up. And um, then you want to download the JV4 mobile app and a new unit will be pre-programmed as map zero, which is no change to the factory mapping. Um, once you've downloaded the JB4 app, first thing you want to do is go into the settings and connect to the unit. It will require a pin number. Once you've it's pretty straightforward, it's a step-by-step. -step. Um, on the display, just hit the connect button. It says it waits handshake. And then once it's connected, it then shows you the detail you need to know that it has. So it shows your RPM plus your um, ignition uh, advance. Also, um, which map number you're on. Now to change the map is pretty straightforward, hit settings, tap the map bu button and here are the eight map options available on the GR Yaris. 
detail of which I will include below of what each map involves and the fuel requirements to enable those maps. Okay, and that's it, ready to go. Okay, so I've gone to the trouble to show you how to do this install on a right-hand drive car by JB4 is mounted down there. Um, but on a left-hand drive car with the OBD2 port is on the left-hand side of the car, as opposed to the right-hand side, you'd still be able to run the cabling through ex the identical way I did on that side, but through this side. The only real caveat we have here is we can't mount the JB4 on this side because this is where the air intake is. That doesn't change for the left-hand drive cars. So as a result, you could consider mounting it, the JB4 on top of the fuse and relay box just here with double-sided tape or something. And you could then run the loom underneath the air box and into the, underneath the engine cover from this side. That would obviously give you a bit more cabling as well to work with. I haven't tested it, but I would suggest that this would be about the limit of the loom that I've routed from the JV4 here. So that is a consideration. Another consideration, I do believe it might fit just beside, um, just in this little space here between the headlight and the air intake as well, just looking at the size of the box. And I think it would tuck in under there, just under the headlight just here. Um, or it could actually run this way and you could actually run the loom under the air box into the same place. So there are solutions, but inherently the process is identical. So the OBD2 can come through the same spot as what it does for the right-hand drive cars if you've got a left-hand drive and where you mount the box will either be next to the intake for the air box or on top of the fuse relay cover here. Anyway, that's the install of the JB4. Hope you found it useful.